A Europe river cruise is truly one of the great joys of life. And there's nothing quite like cruising the Blue Danube. And I've got some insider secrets for you of how to get the most out of your Danube cruise. Hi, I'm Larry Gelwix, the Getaway Guru, and welcome to my travel channel. The purpose of the Getaway Guru is to help you see the world, travel more, and pay less. If you're new to my travel channel, please remember the big three. Subscribe, turn on the notifications, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Recently, I co-hosted a webinar with Ama Waterways, which is a five-star deluxe, completely over-the-top river cruise company, sailing all the major rivers in Europe. What I'd like to do now is share with you a portion of the Danube River Cruise webinar that I co-hosted. I know you'll enjoy it. Well, a very special welcome to our Danube River Cruise webinar today. I'm Larry Gelwicks, the getaway guru with Columbus Travel, and the feature that you see on my YouTube channel, The Getaway Guru. Joined by Brandon Oscarson, a good friend of mine and business development manager for Ama Waterways for the Southwest region. As I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about one of the most popular rivers in Europe, the beautiful Danube. Brandon, welcome to the webinar. What have we got on tap today? Thank you very much. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about Alma Waterways, a few things we do that really sets us apart because we do a lot of things differently in this industry, and it does set us apart in very high levels. And then uh, we'll talk about the Danube, which I have to say is by far the most popular river that people want to cruise in Europe. All right, well, to get started, we're going to talk about Alma Waterways had a very fortunate situation last year. Uh, we were actually the only U.S.-based river cruise line that was able to sell during COVID-19. So we had a ship operating on the Rhine River, uh, cruising from July until, I want to say, about mid-November. And the reason this is such an amazing opportunity is because everybody else in the industry is figuring out what their safety protocols are going to be when guests get on board but we were able to put those practices in place and receive unbelievable and rave reviews. Uh, you can actually go to amawaterways.com forward slash travel dash updates. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And there's a nice little five minute video of the wonderful experience our guests had on board along with the safety protocols. For the sake of time, I am not gonna go over the details, but I encourage you to take a look at the video. Well, since we're going to be talking about the Danube today, I definitely have to mention our award-winning and mold-breaking vessel, the Ama Magna. And the reason this breaks the mold, it is literally double the width. It will only fit on the Danube. So we doubled the width of this vessel, but we only added 40 additional guests. So you've got this big, huge river cruise vessel on the Danube that will hold 196 guests. It is so magnificent that Time Magazine voted it as one of the world's greatest places in 2019 and a multitude of other awards that came along with it. And one of the things that makes it so special is the stateroom sizes. Uh, we had ocean cruisers in mind when we built this because one of the reluctancies of coming on a river cruise it's the size of the staterooms and amenities as well. With the Ama Magna, your average size stateroom is 355 square feet. Just watch. Let me put here. that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Brian. Let me just put that into perspective. That typically a ocean cruise cabin, uh, the their lead cabins are usually about 140 to 150 square feet. A balcony or veranda cabin typically is about 170 to 190 square feet. And we all think uh, that balcony cabin is great, but you're telling me that the average cabin is how big on the Alma Magna? 355 and entry that's, level is 205. That's like double the size. It's magnificent. That's why it is the Alma Magna. And on top of that, something you will not find on river cruise vessels is multiple dining venues. You have four unique dining options available on board the Ama Magna. 
Uh, you have a main restaurant where you're going to have cuisine from the areas you're cruising through. Jimmy's Wine Bar, it's going to have the same food from the main restaurant, but it's served family style. And then our alfresco and chef's table where you have a multi-course dinner. Again, unique options for different venues. Uh, this ship is truly spectacular. There are so many things on this ship that I can't even get into all of the details. You know, I would tell people, call Columbus Travel. They will give you the details. So one of the things that we do differently, uh, again, it's our Wi-Fi. We are the only river cruise line with a 4G network on all of our European ships. So we truly have the fastest Wi-Fi in the river cruise industry. And the reason this is so important these days is everybody has a smartphone or a tablet. So when you're on your excursions, you're going to get the opportunity to take a lot of amazing pictures. As soon as you've set foot on the ship, you can start sharing with your friends and family through your social media and email real time so that they can see these incredible experiences that you're having. And something that's been around for the last couple of years, we have something called My Ama Cruise app. This will have your daily itinerary. So you don't have to carry a piece of paper around. It's right there in the palm of your hand. And, and most of us have our phones on us most of the time. So it's very easily accessible. Now, another area in this industry where we set ourselves apart on a very high level, it's probably where we receive the most and highest awards. It is our dining experience. And Larry, you and I both know if somebody is fed well and they, they have a full belly, they are as happy as they can be. So we have exquisite dining on board. We're members of La Chaine de Ratisser. They are the most prestigious culinary organization in the world. You are going to absolutely love this. And you get an incredible cultural immersion through the dining experience. Cuisine from the areas you're cruising through with your lunch and dinner. Breakfast, very standard breakfast options. And all of our European vessels have our main restaurant at the front of the ship. And we have our chef's table at the aft of the ship. It's a specialty dining. It is included. There is no additional charge for this. Another area where, again, we set ourselves apart on such a high level, it is our shore excursions. Now, we give our guests a lot of opportunities to choose different things that are all included. We have more than 20 included excursions for seven nights sailing. And the way that we do this, every single city we stop in, you have three levels of activity for your main city tour. You can take a gentle walker's crew uh, excursion and walk a little slower to cover a little less ground. You can go on a regular pace walking excursion. This is going to give you the opportunity to see a little bit more of what the city might have to offer. And then you also have free time when you're done. Or you have an active walking excursion. And these are phen phenomenal. You get to go on hikes. And one of the really neat ones, we stop in the city of Dernstein. And at the top of a hill at the back of town, these are the ruins of the Burgewin Castle where King Richard the Lionheart was held captive. Our active walkers get to hike up there and go and explore the ruins. We also have bikes on board. Uh, every place we stop, you have choices. In Vienna, you can either go on your city tour, choose your level of activity, or you can go on a cooking demonstration or walk uh, back alleys of Vienna or wine tasting or art tour. These are all included. We love to give our guests choices because this might not be the first time you're in this place and you can have a unique experience each time. But the real reason we're here to, to talk today is we want to talk about the Upper Danube. So the Upper Danube, most of our sellings go from a, a small town called Vilsafen, Germany, uh, down into Budapest. <clears throat> uh, some of the sellings uh, even go up into Nuremberg. So we, we can go to Nuremberg and Salzburg and all the way to Budapest, but most commonly we turn around in Vilsafen. But you cannot go on a Danube cruise if you have not been to Prague. Uh, I, I think this is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. It was untouched during World War II. Larry, I think you've been there a couple more times than I have. Oh, quite a few times. Prague, in my view, is it's really the most beautiful city in Europe. You know, I love London, Paris, Rome, all of them have a special appeal. But it is Prague in the old town, which is massive. You think you're in fairyland, in Disneyland. Uh, everywhere you turn, uh, there's the architecture and the history. Prague is a home run, a must see on your visit to Europe. And then after your three nights in Prague, which you have a city tour included, 
uh, you will move on to uh, Vilsafen, Germany. This is a beautiful little Bavarian town. You can walk from the ship. Uh, it takes about two minutes to be right into the center of town. Uh, and, and our guests have a very unique option that's available every evening for every embarkation and disembarkation in Vilsafen. Uh, the mayor arranged that we have a beer fest. We actually have a big tent set up right outside of the ship. Uh, they bring the beer queen, they bring musicians, they have pretzels, they have all kinds of fun and entertainment for our guests so that if you're starting this direction, you're starting off with a really fun party in this beautiful little town. Now, Larry, have you been to Vilsafen? Oh, yes. And that, that little beer garden party, great for drinkers or non-drinkers, is so much fun. What's interesting about Wilshof in Germany is it dates back. It was first mentioned in the year 776. It was uh, on what Heinrich the First Castle built in 1206. But what I like about this town is it's a very easy walk. And there's shops and uh, coffee houses, uh, beer halls, and don't be put off by beer halls. It's not like a Wild West bar. It's a, that's a family establishment, kind of like a pub is in Europe. It is a delightful, delightful little village. Yeah, I agree completely. And from there, we move on to Passau, the city of three rivers, another Bavarian town. And now I will tell you, if you're going to Passau, I would recommend going on the Active Walkers tour because you get to hike up to the castle at the top of the hill. It's not a difficult hike. We go upstairs, uh, we take a few breaks along the way, but when you get to the top, this is the view. And uh, it is a city of three rivers. And what we're looking at here is where two of the rivers are coming together. You know what's uh, so wonderful about Passau? It's a great walking a town. I like taking a bicycle there. You can see the uh, tree-lined parks and everything. It, uh, you're looking here from the 13th century hilltop lookout. And what is so fascinating is the architecture, both Gothic and Baroque dot the city. Uh, here it's the Veste Oberhaus is what we're looking at over the city dating back to the 13th century. Wonderful town for shopping too. I, you know, I bought lederhosen there last time I was in town. <laughs> I want to see you in them. <laughs> I could have done it today. <laughs> uh, another stop along the way is Linz, Austria. Now, this is funny because Linz used to be a very industrial town, and it is. And once upon a time, it wasn't particularly desired by the Austrians to live in. Uh, Vienna was where all of the Austrians want to be, but uh, just a couple of years ago, Linz was rated as one of the highest rated cities in all of Austria. It is a college town. It is a tech town. Uh, we do a city tour of Austria. It's a, your morning tour. And then from there, you can go off to Chesky Kremloff or Salzburg, which we'll talk about in a moment. But, but Larry, I know that you love Linz as well. Yeah, you know, it's the third largest city in Austria. And it's a city of history. You want to keep your focus right in the city center. That's where all the action is. And the Altsrathaus um, is the, uh, the old town hall. That is such a fun place to go. What you're going to enjoy is not only the city square that you can see, but it's the side streets and the alleys that are just packed with small shops, boutiques. It's a fairyland in Austria. It is. And, and, you know, a lot of people who go to Lentz have really had their, their heart gone going to Salzburg. And we do offer a half-day tour to Salzburg. But I'll tell you, if this is a place that you've always wanted to visit, it has a very rich history. It is the home of Mozart. It is where The Sound of Music was uh, filmed. I would highly recommend taking the full day because you get so much free time to go and explore. Yeah, you know, think Von Trapp family. Think all things Sound of Music. Salzburg is also a UNESCO World Cultural Site. And one of the things that you can make your own side trip is Lake Wolfgang, very close to Salzburg. Uh, you know, uh, I keep looking for Heidi and grandfather to come out of the mountains with the cowbells uh, on, their, on their herd there. But you know what's nice about this town is a city of culture. And you're going to find quartets and recitals. Uh, a theater. In a lot of the churches, 
will open during the day and have a recital, organ recital, quartet recital, and you can walk around and hear music everywhere. It is really a romantic city. So you're saying the hills are, are filled with the sound of music? They absolutely are. You can see in the picture. Look, I can see, hear the music coming right out of those hills. <laughs> Excellent. And I had briefly mentioned Dernstein. This is a beautiful and charming, very small town. Uh, we, we literally walk from the boat right up into the center of town. We have a lot of different options. Uh, the city tour is, is brief. You get a lot of history. You get a lot of free time to explore. Some of our guests really enjoy the apricot liqueur tasting, and you learn how it is made uh, because uh, this part of uh, Austria is very rich in apricots. Now, you mentioned that you showed the uh, Dernstein Castle, which was uh, constructed 1140 to 1145. And you mentioned that Richard the Lionheart was imprisoned there for about a year, 1192. He was coming back from the Crusades and made some really bad blunders. He comes to this area, tears up the Austrian flag, and refuses to share the spoils of the Crusades with Leopold V. So he throws him in jail. The King of England in, in an Austrian jail. Well, we'll give you all the history of that. This is one of the most picturesque, beautiful towns, and it's a small town. It really lends itself uh, to walking, not only on the tour, but, uh, but exploring on your own. Absolutely. And this is one of the most highly revered monasteries in all of Europe. The Melk Abbey is just breathtaking. And, and actually, uh, one of our local guides will take you to the entrance, and they have very special guides that will walk you through their vast library, the beautiful paintings on their ceiling. I have to say that this is one of the most breathtaking buildings you will walk into along this tour. You know what I like uh, about this, besides the architecture, and it's a, quite a large building, is it's built on an outcrop overlooking the Danube River, and it's really the jewel of the Wakao Valley. Uh, just beautiful vistas, and you get a real sense of history here. Absolutely. And obviously, we cannot cruise the Danube without Vienna. <clears throat> I did mention, mention the list of tours available in Vienna. Uh, I, I'm a coffee lover, and I will tell you that, that Starbucks has nothing on Vienna. This is like the best place in the world to get amazing pastries, coffees, and the culture is so vibrant, and the people are warm and friendly. Uh, it, this is one of the biggest stops along the way, and this is really the home of classical music. We do some really special excursions here. You know, this, uh, this is the largest city, of course, in Austria. Mozart, Beethoven uh, lived here. It's a very cultural city. There's horse-drawn carriages. I like the city trams that'll get you uh, all around. Now, Brandon mentioned coffee houses. And, you know, that's a, a place to sit. It's more than just uh, coffee, but it's pastries and sandwiches. People can sit there. Most of them have free Wi-Fi. But when you think of pastries and sweets and you think of Vienna, think chocolate. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, <laughs> everything chocolate they have there. St. Stephen's Cathedral built in 1147. And the Imperial Palace is my favorite, Schoenbrunn, uh, which is just one of the highlights uh, of the city there. Very popular, this uh, whole area, particularly the architecture in the 12th to 16th century shaped the city. Uh, it's a must see, you'll enjoy it. And again, uh, AMA offers excursions for every interest and every exercise level from very easy to, you know, a little bit challenging, but you can get what you want. Love Vienna. And as you had mentioned before, uh, the Melk Abbey overlooking the Wakao Valley, Every river cruise has a scenic daytime cruise, and this is where you get it. So you can get out and get those beautiful photos and have an opportunity to just get up on the sun deck, get some fresh air, and enjoy cruising time because most of your cruising happens while you're sleeping. You know what's so fun as you pass through this, you'll see some castles on hilltops, but what charms me are the quaint villages all along the shore. Uh, the landscape, one of the most picturesque and peaceful areas 
that you'll enjoy on your Danube cruise. And for me, this is a hidden gem, Bratislava. Uh, I've never heard someone say, I can't wait to visit Bratislava. And when they get there, they can't wait to go back again. It is a melting pot of cultures. This is another place where you walk off the ship in less than five minutes, you are in the heart of town. And if you're looking for handcrafted items to bring back as souvenirs or maybe something for yourself, there are so many little shops in town where you can literally see that these items were handmade. We know uh, here we're visiting Slovakia, which was part of Eastern Europe before the fall of the Soviet Union. And part of the old town is really frozen in time. Now, what's interesting is our Ama Waterways uh, river ship will pull up right in downtown. I mean, that's where we dock. You get off and the downtown old town area is a pedestrian only area. And so it's easy walking. Uh, you've got, of course, the famous Bratislava castle overlooking the city on the hilltop, but it's sidewalk cafes, coffee houses, and all these little shops and boutiques in a pedestrian area. This one is fun because much of it is a throwback to the 19th and 20th century when it was frozen in time. And I have to say that this is one of the biggest highlights of the entire trip, uh, at least for me, Budapest. Uh, Budapest is stunningly beautiful. Uh, here we're looking at the parliament from Fisherman's Bastion. You get a tour uh, of a, you'll get a, a motor coach tour and you'll also get a walking tour. You get a lot of free time. Larry, I'm going to let you talk about Budapest. You know, what's interesting is we, we call it Budapest, which is the name, but it was really the bringing together of two areas or region, Buda and Pest. Uh, on each side of the river, and they brought them together in one city, Buda and Pesh became Budapest. What, you know, this is, a, this is one of the most architecturally wondrous cities in Europe, particularly Trinity Square. And you go back to the Matthias Church, uh, 13th century. Uh, everywhere you go, there's this architecture. It is Hungary's capital and uh, such a fun, fun uh place to visit. And here you can get a great inexpensive gift for dozens of people, these little packages of paprika. And that's a fun thing uh, to bring back. But it's the architecture of the city that draws me to Buddha and Pest. And one of the beauties of river cruising is you are docking in the heart of the towns in these big cities that we're visiting because life was built along the rivers. And one of the questions I am often asked is, uh, can I get off the ship at night? Because a lot of ocean cruisers are used to being back on board at four so you can be out of port at six. Well, with the river cruise, once we're in port for the night, you can get off and explore. Uh, these cities change. They come to life at night as well. So you have these amazing opportunities while you're cruising with us. Yeah, you know, it really is the fun and it's, it's a throwback. What I like is you've got most of the river cruises with AMA will hold somewhere between 160 up to almost 200 people on the AMA Magna. What is that? 196, I think. Yeah. And so you can pull, we can pull into small villages, big cities like Vienna. There's a very good uh, balance, but you don't overwhelm the village or the town or the city. You can mix in with the locals. And I got to tell you, one of my favorite things was after the tour we took in Vienna on the last AMA Waterways uh, group tour that I took, is a friend of mine and I, uh, we had some other friends on board. We grab bicycles. So you can go on a bicycle tour with a group or you can take them out on your own. Another AMA Waterways exclusive. And we explored Vienna on our own on bicycles. Now, how cool is that? That's amazing. Now, a lot of times people hear me talk about how we're rated. I'm often asked, how do you rank compared to other river cruise lines? And Berlitz is a, an amazing reference. Uh, it, it's actually very prestigious to get a good ranking from them. It's hard to get anything over a four. Now, Berlitz has released four editions. And the reason it's so amazing is they do secret shoppers. You know, nobody can pay to get a better rating. Nobody can market to get a better rating. Uh, whatever you get, you just happen to get. 
And out of three Berlitz guides, 10 of our ships are always the highest rated. And the three things that come in on top are food, service, and amenities. We are very consistent in how we operate. You know, and we don't have time to go through all the awards. Best ship, best river cruise line, best dining, best shore excursion. But here's the way I explain it to people. There are several really good Europe river cruise companies. There really are. And you're going to have a good experience with any of them. But AMA Waterways is a clear step above. Just uh, some of the details, uh, the way they do things, the shore excursions, they absolutely knock it out of the park in the dining room. So, yeah, there are some really good cruise lines out there. But AMA, this is trust Larry time, is just a step above in everything that they do. Uh, so as we bring this uh, Danube uh, webinar to an end, I want to ask Brandon, the Danube is referred to as the Blue Danube. Do you know the history behind that? I Something to do with blue coats floating in the Danube? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is. Uh, the Austrian composer, Johann Strauss, uh, composed the uh, famous waltz on the Blue Danube in 1867. And what brought the Blue Danube that phrase to mind is he recalled a poem written by Carl Beck, where he said, but the Danube, the beauty, the beauty of the Blue Danube in the poem, Johann Strauss remembered that and incorporated into, you know, such a world famous waltz on the beautiful Blue Danube. Danube. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we've talked about kind of the north-south. One week they'll go Budapest to Vilshofen and then turn around and come back. An another interesting itinerary is the east-west, and it goes into Eastern Europe, and it's Budapest to Bucharest, Romania, and that really is a step back in time. So thank you, Brandon Oscarson, Business Development Manager, Southwest uh, Southwest region for AMA Waterways. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru, and we'd love to answer your questions about an AMA Waterways experience on the Blue Danube. Give us a call at Columbus Travel, 800-373-3328 or online at columbusvacations.com. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed cruising the Danube as much as I've enjoyed taking you there. I really do enjoy Europe River cruises. You visit out of the way places, big cities, small villages, you know, a lot of places you'd probably never get to on your own. And what's nice is the ships typically hold anywhere between 150 and 200 people so that when you go into a village, you don't overwhelm the local culture, but you blend into the local environment. All your meals are included, your activities, and what's really nice is that your tours, these shore excursions in these cities and villages and out of the way places are all included. Now, most river cruise companies, especially AMA Waterways, will offer a wide variety of activities and tours suitable to any participation level. You get to choose which ones that you want to see. You know, in Europe, there are four primary river cruise itineraries. The Danube, which goes both east and west from Budapest to Bucharest and north-south heading up into Austria and Germany, Slovakia and other stops along the way. Then there's the Rhine River, which is castle country. The Seine, which is usually Paris to Normandy and back and then the Volga, Moscow to St. Petersburg. They're all wonderful experiences, but the Danube is something special. I think it offers some of the most unique itinerary, both going to Bucharest, venturing into Eastern Europe, or sailing north or south from Budapest through Slovakia, Austria, and Germany. You just see some of the most beautiful landscape and villages in Europe. Yeah, you're really going to enjoy the Danube. Hey, if you want some more information about a Europe River cruise, especially the Danube, give us a call at Columbus Travel, 
3328 or online at columbusvacations.com. There is a link in the descriptions below that'll take you right to the Columbus Travel website. Well, enjoy your travels. I know you'll love the Danube. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe. Happy traveling.